by the way, what do you think of when you think of the word rational? When someone is, uh, usually you use the word irrational. When someone's irrational, what does that mean? It means they don't make sense or they're not following logic, right? So the word rational is the opposite of irrational. So if irrational means kind of crazy and weird, then rational should mean well-behaved. And that's what these kinds of numbers are. They're kind of like well-behaved numbers because they are real numbers. And I'll explain sort of what that means in just a second. That can be written as a fraction. So when a number can be written as a fraction, we call it rational because it's sort of playing by the rules. It's, it's, it's a, it's a well-behaved well -behaved number. So let's examine this definition. First of all, we're saying that a rational number is a real number. Now, we haven't talked about um, imaginary numbers yet, but when you study algebra down the road, you're going to learn about something called imaginary numbers. So for now, just think of real numbers as being any negative or positive number you can dream up. Uh, negative fractions like negative one half, positive three fourths, negative decimals like negative 0.5, positive 0.8, any number you can dream of that is negative or positive that doesn't have an imaginary i in it, which we'll talk about later, that, those are called real numbers. They're the tangible numbers that you can touch. Anyway, so it's a real number that can be written as a fraction. So let's give some examples of, of what a rational number would be. The number zero is a rational number. What you need to do is ask yourself, can, to see if it's rational or not, can you write this number as a fraction? How would you write the number zero as a fraction? Well, zero can be written as, for instance, zero over one. Right? You could also write it as zero over anything because zero divided by anything is always going to be zero. So the number zero is able to be written as a fraction. All you have to do is find one fraction that you can write this number as. And if you can do that, then the number is rational. So the number zero is rational. All right. Let's take another example. What about the number eight? Is that a rational number? Well, you just ask yourself, can I write this number as a fraction? And you think about it for a second and say, yes, I can write it as eight over one. So the number eight is a rational number. What about the number 1.5? Is that a rational number? Um, well, you can write the number 1.5 as 3 halves. Right? That's a fraction, 3 halves. If you take 3 and divide it by 2 in your calculator, or if you do it longhand, you'll find out that you get exactly 1.5. So the number 1.5 is rational. So you see lots and lots of different kinds of numbers are rational. Let's pick another example. What about um, uh, negative 0.67. Now you look at something like that and you're like, well, how would I write that as a fraction? Well, notice that <clears throat> this fraction, it stops, this decimal, it stops at 0.67. It's a negative, but it's 0.67. There are no numbers after it. So anytime you have a number that stops like that, the negative sign has to stay there, but you can write it, for instance, as 67 over 100. If you think about that, that's what's happening. You take the number 67 divided by 100, it's moving the decimal two spots, so you get the 0.67. Of course, negative or positive doesn't matter. Um, I'm just trying to give you a flavor for a bunch of examples. Zero, positive whole numbers, any negative whole number can be written as a fraction. Lots of decimals of different kinds, either well-behaved like 1.5 or 0.67. You know, you can write lots and lots and lots of different uh, numbers that are uh, rational. In fact, almost all numbers really are rational. They can almost always be written as a fraction of some kind. So almost everything is rational. So then you might ask yourself, well, and I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. If almost all numbers are written, can be written as a fraction, if they're almost always rational, then what would be an example of an irrational number? Right? We haven't talked about that yet. We're going to talk about irrational numbers later, but I want to give you an example. The famous number pi. You've probably heard of it, right? And normally you learn that pi is equal to 3.14, and you normally stop there and say 3.14. Well, in fact, if pi was actually exactly equal to 3.14, you can write this as a, as a fraction. Um, you can write this as a fraction. In fact, you can write it, this as 314 divided by 100. That would move the decimal. That would be how you'd write it as a fraction. But pi is not equal to 3.14, no matter what you may have been taught. It's not equal to this. It's close, but it's not quite equal to this. Pi is really equal to 3.141526 dot, 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 dot. And when I, put, when I put the dots, it means that there are numbers that come after this, and they go on forever and ever and ever. You see, pi is a very special number. It's irrational. It means that it has a, re, it has a decimal portion that doesn't really have any repeating uh, nature to it. 
1415926. There's no repeating nature here. These numbers, you can calculate them on for thousands and thousands of decimal places, and there really won't be any repeating patterns. So I'm kind of getting ahead of myself a little bit, but the concept of pi is this non-repeating decimal that goes on and on forever, and you cannot write that as a simple fraction. You can't pull two numbers out, like 10 over 2 or... You know, you might have read that 22 over 7 is, is pi, but really that's just a close approximation. You cannot write this decimal as a fraction, and that means that pi is irrational. There are other irrational numbers out there. So anyway, this lesson is on the rational numbers, and we'll get to irrationals later. Um, so what we want to do next is we want to do a little bit of practice with these things called rational numbers. So what I want you to do is fill in the following uh, numbers, or blanks, with either a less than symbol, a greater than a symbol, or an equal to symbol. And it's just getting you practice with dealing with these rational numbers, which we all talked about before, it's known as a fraction. What if you have one ninth, and you want to figure out if that's greater than, less than, or equal to four twenty-sevenths? How would you do that? Well, you're trying to compare these two things. So you need to, uh, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but the way I teach it is you want to get a common denominator, and so you express both fractions in the same denominator. You have 27 and you have 9, so I can multiply this fraction by 3 over 3, and when I do that, I'm going to have a 3 over 27, blank, 4 over 27. Now you can look at this and say, which fraction is smaller? Well, 3 27 is smaller than 4 27, so it goes like this. All right, and we're going to do all of these basically the same way. We're just getting some practice with rational numbers. What if you had a negative three fourths blank negative nine twelfths? So the same kind of thing. I want to get and in, in work into a common denominator situation. So I have twelve and I have four. So the way I can get a common denominator here is multiply this by three and this by three. And when I do that, it'll be negative nine twelfths blank uh, negative nine. Twelfths. So is this greater than, less than, or equal to? Well, negative nine twelfths is exactly equal to negative nine twelfths, so it's an equal sign that you want there. That's the correct answer. And then the last one that we're going to do here is going to be three fourths uh, blank twenty seven thirty seconds. Same sort of thing. We want to get a common denominator. Four times eight is thirty two. So I'm going to take and multiply this fraction by eight. So three times eight will have twenty four over 32, um, and then over here it will be 27 over 32. So now which one's bigger? You can see that 27 30 seconds is larger, so the arrow is going to go this way. So in the original fraction, the arrow will go this way. The original fraction, whoops, uh, this will be an equal sign, and the original fraction will go like this. So if you're trying to compare two rational numbers to figure out which one's greater than or equal to, it's best to go ahead and put them on equal footing with a common denominator, then you can figure it out. So to recap this section, the concept of a rational number is any real number you can dream up, negative, positive, decimal, fraction, uh, or zero, that can be written as a fraction, which is almost all numbers, right? Only very special numbers like pi are really what you call irrational. Almost everything else can be written as a fraction. And to compare them, we just did a few problems to show, show us how to do that down there. Um, follow me on to the next lesson. We're going to continue working with rational numbers and learning how to, to deal with them in the context of algebra. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.